Dregger Tofs, my name is Kadel Matsukere, and welcome to one of my lessons. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. This is one of my books, grade 12, grade 11, grade 10, like that. Uh, you can get them <laughs> mostly through me. This one is 250, it's the complete version. This one is 200, it's the no answers version. And there are other things that I give out for free, like this one. Uh, I can send a PDF to you if you want it. All right, uh, today's lesson is on Monopoly. The first lesson I did on graphs, Monopoly, was uh, economic loss. So now we are going to do an economic profit for a Monopoly. All right, just like the first video, I'm going to go through this table, uh, but this time around I'm going to try to be a little bit faster. All right, in this table, what I want to show is basically that the demand curve for a monopoly does not look like the demand curve for uh, a perfect competitor and uh, i'm not going to say how it looks like i'll say it when i'm done explaining it so uh as you can see we have a table and from that table we are basically constructing curves and three curves in particular demand curve marginal revenue curve average revenue curve right uh the, the, the first thing you see is that from the first unit, uh, the price is 20. If this was a perfectly competitive market, the price would remain 20 for all the units, and then it would be 1, 22, 23, 20. Uh, the price stays constant, and this is because the individual is a price taker, and that demand curve, we say it is perfectly elastic. Now you'll see it's not the case for a monopoly. Already you can see that from the second unit, uh, the price has dropped from 20 to 18. And from the third unit, it has dropped to 16. So it keeps dropping by two units as we proceed. Right, so basically it looks like this. And uh, at the ninth unit, the price has dropped to four rands. So now with this, we then connect the dots. Then we have our demand curve there. Now from this demand curve, we look at the next curve. The next curve is the average revenue curve that I want to look at. If you look at the average revenue curve, AR, uh, it is 100% uh, the same as uh, the, 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 the one for price. 20, 20, 18, 18, 16, 16. It also drops by two. And the reason is, if you use the formula for calculating average revenues, TR divided by Q. So if you look at TR for the first unit, it's 20 divided by 1, that's 20. The second TR is 36. 36 divided by 2 is a, it's 18. The third one, it's 48. 48 divided by 3, that's 16. So it keeps, uh, it, it mirrors the price. It does the same thing because, yes, common sense. Then, so at, that, at the end of the day, we say D is equal to AR. And I thought I corrected this one but it shows that I didn't. It says MR here, it's not MR, it's AR. Right, so it's AR there. Right, so D is equal to AR, but is it the same with marginal revenue? Let's look at the first one. The first one is 20. Yes, they are equal on the first one, but it's only on the first one. On the second one, it's 16, and then yeah, I think you can see the dots moving down there. Uh, I won't take time because I did this video already, this part. So I'll just uh, run through it. There you see our marginal revenue curve is not equal to our demand curve. It's not equal to our average revenue curve. But our demand curve is equal to our average revenue curve. So let's jump into the graph that shows uh, the type of profit for the day. So we have our demand curve that's downward sloping. And this is the demand curve for the entire industry because mono means one. So it means you are the only firm in this entire industry. So your demand curve also in, uh, represents the demand curve for the industry. And the marginal revenue curve, just like we saw in the previous slide, it is not equal to our demand curve. So there is a question that's common. And uh, this question says, in, okay, if, if we are talking about perfect competition, it says, why is demand curve and AR equal to MR in case of perfect? Well, it's equal because each additional unit is sold at the same price. Look at the table, do the numbers. We sell each additional unit at the same price. 
So when we use the formula change in TR divided by change in quantity, we are going to say get the same answer uh, as the price. We are going to get the same answer as the average revenue. So MR is equal to D and equal to AR. And the reason is because each additional unit is sold at the same price. Common sense. Now, that same question can be recycled and asked in as far as the monopoly is concerned. And how they do it now is they, instead of them saying, why is MR equal to AR? They say, why is MR not equal to AR? Or why is MR not equal to demand? Well, the answer to the question is because each additional unit is sold at a lower price. So you see, in case of a perfect competitor, we say, we say uh, each additional unit is sold at the same price. In this case, we say each additional unit is sold at a lower price or is not sold at the same price, if you want to say. But if you want to be 100% correct, you say each additional unit is sold at a lower price. Okay, now, just like a monopoly, just like a perfect competitor, the monopolist also has to maximize its profit and it applies the same profit maximizing rule. And if you want to understand more about this, the first video on this playlist, it talks about such rules. So you, need, you may need to go back and watch that video. All right, so in that case, um, we have to introduce our marginal cost curve. And when we do, we see that it intersects MR at some point, and we are going to call it point E. And this point E, I repeat, is not, uh, uh, what do you call that, equilibrium. It's not a point of equilibrium, but it's a profit maximizing point. And it's a very common question. Now, what does that point give us? It gives us the profit maximizing output. So this monopoly should t sell 10 units. Why? Because that is where it maximizes its profits. And uh, I'll take my pointer and explain something here. In most cases, if I ask a learner to go to the board and uh, show us the price, they will take the price from here and just go there to the price axis and say, this is the price. And I'll ask other learners if that's correct. They'll mostly agree. Yes, it's correct. Nine times out of 10. I've seen it. I've tested it. And I do it intentionally. And even right now, I, I drew this line. In most cases, you would see someone explaining, they'll draw it all the way from demand. And in that case, it won't give that confusion. And I do it intentionally for people to understand what's going on. So in this case, yes, I stopped there just to confuse learners. And they do get confused. But once they get confused now, they'll never get confused again because now they'll know that, oh, okay, it doesn't end there. What determined, because I do such things to present an opportunity to explain. I always have a lot of questions that I'll ask, and I know nine times out of 10, even if I'm talking to teachers, I've done it a lot. When I'm having workshops with teachers, I do the same tricks and trust me, maybe with teachers eight times out of 10. Now I'm saying eight out of 10, meaning it's tricky and some won't see that trick. So, but yeah, to be honest, we then proceed up, touch the demand curve because the demand curve is that which determines the price. So then our price is 10, like um, you can see here. So now is this firm making a profit or loss? Well, if you think it's making a profit, then you thinking you know is wrong actually because you don't know the answer is we don't know we have no idea what kind of a profit this firm is making uh you might need to watch that video again which says when it comes to profit or loss two things ar ac compare the two if ar is greater than ac economic profit if ar is equal to ac normal profit if ar is less than ac economic loss so what do we have here we only have ar and the value of ar at 10 units is 10 rands so what is the value of ac we have no idea the only cost curve we have here is the marginal cost curve and the marginal cost curve has nothing to do with profit or loss it has everything to do with profit maximization or loss 
minimization. But it has nothing to do with economic profit, normal profit, economic loss, nothing, zero. So we cannot tell. But until we introduce the average cost curve, and as you can see, I introduced my average cost curve below 10. Yes, there. It's below 10. So in this case, our average cost is 7. Now, this is good news. We are selling for 10 rent. It costs us 7 rent. So you know what we are making. We are making an economic profit. Now, there's a way to prove that this is an economic profit. And the way is by simply saying AR minus AC. So if we say AR, which is 10 rent minus AC 7, we get positive 3. So this firm is making an economic profit. And the reason is because AR is greater than AC. Right. So as easy as that, we have come to the end of the lesson. And um, please don't forget to share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, thank you so much. God bless.